What's going on, Next Gen fam? Welcome back to Mentor Momentum with Next Gen HQ. I am so excited for you to check out this week's episode with Elon Woods. Elon is the brand activation manager at Coca Cola and recently left to actually start her own business, diving into the entrepreneurial world. So, we have so much that we talk about together from her ability to avoid fear based decisions to the importance of being the squeaky wheel, as she says it, in, and not just about working hard, but actually being able to speak up and advocate for what you think is right and be able to do the right work by the team. And finally, we talk a bit about the distinction between instinct and anxiety and when to listen to both and when to understand what is actually driving you. So I can't wait for you to check out this incredible episode of Mentor Momentum featuring Elon Woods. I want to talk about um, this new venture that you got working on in your, you know, in your side time and kind of this, you know, side hustle, if you will, that, you know, the term that the next generation loves, but um, pulling on your, you know, kind of incredible corporate career, what is maybe one lesson that's helping you get ready for, you know, this own entrepreneurial venture that you're embarking on? Um, the thing that really at this time has been helping me the most in terms of being able to determine when is that time to kind of make a pivot mm -hmm. uh, has been to realize that you can't make a decision based on fear. Mm -hmm. um, through my career, there have been plenty of opportunities where, you know, especially as you go from being, uh, you know, a youth living in your parents, that type of thing, to becoming a young adult, life starts to happen, you start to have responsibilities. It's very easy for us to frequently start to make decisions based on fear, fear of what will happen if this doesn't work, what will happen if, um, you know, if I can't make the money that I need specifically in this moment, what will people think, all of the what ifs, right, that cause you to kind of question and self-doubt the decisions that you're going to be making, and that can be inside of a corporate environment where you're thinking about, do I want to take an opportunity that maybe some something that I feel more positive about or more, you know, more kind of driven and, and focused on from like a creative standpoint versus going through something that's operational, really leaning into specific spaces where you feel that you want to give yourself some more experience. Um, and when you make decisions out of fear, it never turns out well, right? So even when you may like get the next opportunity, that's a good stepping stone for you internally. If you don't feel good about it, it's, it's never going to be the right decision for you. So yes, have those types of questions and be realistic about, you know, what are the circumstances that you're facing in the moment that you may have as obligation and responsibilities, um, but allow those to be things that you really just process from like a thinking standpoint and fuel you to be the one that makes a conscious decision versus a decision, you know, potentially being made for you because you're afraid of the alternative. So the first thing I want to say is imposter syndrome happens to all of us and it doesn't ever stop. Right. So I think that's really important for the, these younger generations of entrepreneurs to understand is that it's not a one and done thing, right? You don't get over imposter syndrome and then it never comes back. It can come back repeatedly in the same role, in the same business. Um, every time that you kind of expand your, your skill set or you start to embrace something that is new, it's scary, right? Like if we're just being honest, every time you try something new, it's scary. You've never done it before. You're not as familiar with it. It's not something that you can trust that you know you've proven yourself to be able to do. Um, but you have to understand that that is the reality of what it is. The imposter syndrome is truly just the idea of, I haven't proven that I can do this yet. Mm. And so I'm questioning my ability to do it because I haven't proven I've done this specific thing yet, right? I've never ridden a, a tricycle before. Okay, great. But I've ridden a bicycle before. I've been able to ride a scooter, right? I can walk. I have legs. The idea of like, well, let me think about the skills that I actually have that can show me why I can take on this next you know, this next venture, this next role is really what will help you to process through that. Um, and then also having the right people around you. Like I cannot stress that enough about having the right people around you who are going to continue to encourage you when you have those kind of self-doubt moments to be like, okay, so it's cool that you feel that for right now, but like, let's take a step back into reality. So I hear you saying that like, you don't think that you can do this, but like, haven't you already been doing this for three years? Or didn't you do that when you were in high school? Or didn't you do that with like our friend? It doesn't just have to be skills that you've earned from like a professional standpoint. You could be demonstrating those skills in other parts of your personal life. So be able to lean into those things that help you overcome that fear. We got to know, we got to get a look underneath the hood of uh, this venture that you're working on. Cause I, I feel like you got some really cool experiences and stories and maybe how you stumbled upon this. Uh, it seems like you really got you know, your, your mind right about how to launch this and when the time is right. So any, you know, stories, tidbits, any look under the hood that you can give us at what's, you know, kind of coming next in your entrepreneurial life. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've been in the marketing industry for almost 20 years now. Um, and this is going to major kind of pivot from that traditional kind of marketing uh, 
experience traditionally. Now there's going to be skills that I pull from it, but um, I'm leaning into the consulting realm um, and not your traditional consulting capacity. I'm going to be leaning into providing consulting and coaching for expecting and new moms. Mm. Um, one of the things that I can tell you has made me super successful from a marketing standpoint is my ability to focus on the consumer first, mm. not to think about like what it is that I want to communicate, what is the product that is that I want to offer, but really lean into what the need is, who am I talking to, and what's going to be able to give them, you know, fulfillment for them to feel good. And I can do that whether that's me selling them a pack of gum, me selling them a Sprite, or me selling them something that, you know, as a new mom says, hey, these are resources that you need that's going to help this transition into this new experience for you bit more smooth, right? Because nobody's giving you that guidance of why you need that. And so those are the transferable skills that I'm pulling over um, because I recognize that right now, this is obviously, especially after the pandemic, people having children never stops, but the yeah. pandemic has shown a huge baby boom, people having kids in hospitals without having their family and support system there. You can't have mom and you know grandparents and things like that dropping by like they normally would. Um, and so it just proved really apparent for me that there was a need for this even more so than ever before. Um, myself, I have two children. I have a, my youngest son was born almost a year ago. So literally the week before the world shut down for the pandemic. Um, and so I, I experienced that, right? I experienced birthing and raising a child inside of this time where you don't have that kind of support system around you. And that was always something that I was passionate about, obviously, because I'm a mom and because I, I recognize that from like a marketer standpoint, but even more pivotal in this specific moment of time that says there is something that really is out there as a need and I don't see it being served. I want to take a step all the way back, all the way back to the beginning of your career. You're coming out of school, 20 years old, you know, around that time. What's maybe one piece of advice that you would give that version of yourself looking back now? So this was a piece of advice that I got myself right around that time frame, and um, it has been invaluable to me throughout my career. Be the squeaky wheel. You all may have heard the saying, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Um, I came into this industry, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed in the belief that hard work itself will propel you everywhere that you need to go, right? Because that's what we're taught. If you work hard, if you do the right things, if you study hard, all those things, right, you will be successful. And that's true. You do have to work hard. You do have to make sure that you know that you are doing, you're putting in the hours and that you're making sure that your craft is sharp. Um, but there's also people that you've seen that you're like, well, I mean, like, I'm definitely just as good as them, or I'm even better at this thing than they are. But why is that they keep getting the recognition, they keep getting seen? Um, and a large part of it is honestly, it's because they're willing to say it out loud to, you know, not in a, in a braggadocious or boastful way, but to simply say, hey, so I finished this thing for you already, or hey, here's some additional thoughts that I had on this. Assert yourself to be out there as seen as the person who is doing the work and who's doing the work well. You cannot sit there and make the assumption that like, hey, if I do all this great work, I'll have this portfolio of all this amazing stuff. And people are just going to know that I'm the one that's behind all of this fantastic stuff that's coming out of it. They won't. You have to be able to speak up and be your own advocate because mentors are amazing. Um, it's great to have them. It's important for you to be able to find somebody who's also going to, to voice your successes as well as like, you know, what you bring to the table. Um, and I, I include that kind of as part of like, you know, being the squeaky wheel, making sure that you're aligning yourself with people who are going to be those advocates for you in the rooms that you're not present in, that are going to speak wonderful about you when you're not there. But also capitalize on the moments that when you do have a seat at the table, when you are present, no matter what that role is, make sure that you are aligning yourself to show yourself doing that role as the best that you possibly can. It is having to find the balance, right, of what you're saying about like finding the moments of like, when is it right for you to speak up in certain ways and figuring out not necessarily when is the right moment, but also what's the best way for you to speak up, recognizing how to be the squeaky wheel, right? Um, and, and not to... Um, you know, not to seem like you're not being a part of the team, that you're being, um, you know, siloed or that you don't feel like you're a contributor to the broader group, but also recognizing that you add value. You know, there is a certain amount of like humility as well as confidence, while it's not like being conceited, that you have to find that balance because that is also going to be what helps you with that imposter syndrome that we talked about earlier. One thing we love talking about here at Next Gen is failure and mistakes. Um, you know, and uh, everyone always talks about the successes and, you know, you try to, you know, you get into any entrepreneur story, there's got to be failure along the way and anyone's story, you know, you fail a ton. And we always like to talk about like the learnings and the lessons and how can we learn from those who came before so we can avoid those same mistakes. So thinking about your career, your life journey, is there maybe one moment that sticks out a mistake that you made that you learned from so that our people can avoid that trap? Not trusting my own voice, <clears throat> not trusting my own gut. 
um, that has been the biggest mistake that I have made is not trusting my instinct. Um, you know, there's a difference between having instinct and having anxiety. Hmm. Um, anxiety will give us the, will tell us like something needs to happen, right? Like you need to do this thing, but it won't necessarily give you the additional steps that you need to take in order to do it. Instinct will tell you, these are the next three things that need to take place. There's a difference, right? There's a nuance that you have to find in between there to be able to discern that voice that happens inside of your head and recognizing kind of what is the, the force behind it, right? Is it, are you, are you telling yourself you need to do this because you're feeling greed or because you're feeling envy or because you see someone else that has it, right? Is that what's causing you to feel like you need to do this thing is, you know, for you to think that that is your voice inside? No, it's not. But if your instinct is telling you, hey, this is like, I just really feel it in my, like in my soul. Like, you know, I feel it in my gut. Like this is the thing to do. And you can't shake that feeling. That is something that you need to make sure that you listen to, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you don't, um, it, it steers you in the wrong direction and you can very easily, right? Like if, if we're inside of a boat, you can very easily find yourself just taking, you know, a few inches off course. Yeah. over time and the next thing you know you look up and you are a mile away from the path that you would seem for yourself because you didn't really focus on you know what's causing me to take these slight steps to the to the alternate path stay true to yourself listen to yourself there's nobody who knows what you have inside of you um, better than you do and you always have something you need to offer so don't think about what the outside world has to offer what they're already doing you have your own spin on it and let that be your fuel to keep going that was Mentor Momentum, sharing life and business lessons from incredible leaders. Looking for more momentum? Subscribe to our weekly Momentum newsletter at nextgenhq.com and check out our other podcast, Momentum Audio, on any of your favorite podcast channels. Now that's Momentum.